Hi there, my name is James and I'm the developer advocate for Tina. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Tina GraphQL Gateway CLI. This allows you to model your content as you wish so that you can use it with the Tina Cloud client. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how the defining schema works, the content modeling behind it, and how to locally request that information from the GraphQL layer. So for this explanation of the Tina GraphQL gateway, I've created a folder and done yarn init. So the first thing we need to do is add Tina GraphQL gateway CLI as a dev dependency. So to do that, we're going to type yarn, add dash dash dev Tina GraphQL gateway CLI. And that will install the packages that we need to create our schema and define it. So now that we've installed those packages, we also need to make a directory for Tina. So to do that, just do make dir and do dot dot Tina. And at the same time, I'm going to create the schema file that we're going to use. So we can just do a touch Tina schema.ts. So now we have this Tina folder here. So the schema file is going to be used as a way to define the content models that you want for your website. So the first thing we need to do is import the define schema. And that comes from the Tina GraphQL gateway CLI. And now we can actually just define the schema as we so wish. So I'm going to do an export default here and use define schema. And then inside of this, this is where we can define things like collections, templates, labels, fields, types, etc. And that will get converted into GraphQL. But before we define the schema, Let's talk about each of the individual pieces that create a full schema to be used with Tina. So the first thing that we define in the schema is the collections. Now you can think of the collections of a way to inform the API about where to save your content. So if you created a collection and the first one was, for example, posts, that you could tell it should be stored in say content slash posts and it can be uh, this type of template. So let's create our first collection here and I'm going to give it a label and the label for this collection is going to be blog posts and then I'm going to give it a name and this name defines the name of this particular collection. So we're going to call it post. And then we're going to give it a path. Now, currently I don't have any folders over here, but I'm going to tell it that anything that's in our blog post should be found in content slash posts. Then we get to define the template. So we can do templates here. And the templates is another array. Now let's talk about templates for a second before we move on. So you can think of a template as a way to shape the content that you're creating. So for example, here of blog posts, we're going to want to have a template that has the title and maybe the author who has created this blog post. And we also need to give it a label and a name. So inside of our template here, we're going to create a label. Now this label is going to be article, and we're also going to give it a name and we'll also call that article. Now fields are what you will see when you are in the editing screen, in the sidebar where you get to select, say you want to change the title, that will be there. Or if you wanted to use the authors that we're going to create in a second in our schema, you could select from a drop down a different author. So we need to define what their type is and also the label and the name. So let's give the 
first field a type of text and we will give that the name and label of title and then we will create a second object here and that object is going to hold our authors so what you can do with a type is actually create a reference now we're going to create this in a second underneath the article we will create uh, our second part which will be authors so we can actually reference those authors and be able to pull them in for our content so i'm going to do a label here and we'll call it author and we're going to give it the name author And then it's going to ask for the collection because we're doing a reference here it needs to know the collection that we're using so this collection right here is blog posts so the second collection will be called authors so we can create this and call it authors now when we hit save here we've created this first object which is going to be the first thing in our collection then we can create a second one which we'll use called authors and then we can use that as part of our overall collection so our second template here is going to be authors as i explained previously so let's give it a label of authors and then we'll give it a name as authors in lowercase and then we're going to give it a path similar to this at the beginning right we have this path content slash post which we don't have yet but i'm going to create some dummy content so we can play around with the graphql but we're going to also put the same sort of path so we're going to have content and then slash authors and now we get to define the template again so we can do templates and we can say in our array we're going to have the first one is going to be named author and we're going to give it a name of author as well and then we need the fields that we're going to use so for an author we're going to need their name and obviously some sort of image that reflects who they are so we're going to do type of text and we'll give it a label of name and then we'll give it a name of name and then we'll create our second object here that will contain the type and we'll say text as well because we'll just use a uh, media url so that can just be type text and we'll call this avatar and then we'll name it avatar as well so now we've defined the schema here let's just go through it one more time and make sure we understand each piece of it so that we can truly understand how this is going to work when we launch the graphql gateway and start looking at the data so the collections contains each type of uh data that we're going to be using and what they're going to be labeled and what their path is for the content that you're modeling the templates part gives you the ability to label name and add fields such as text or dates or references and use those to shape the way it's going to look in the sidebar what's a key note here as well is that you can have multiple templates for a single collection so if you needed to have multiple templates you can certainly do that then inside of our fields we have each type and the name that we're going to give it so now we've kind of got a basic understanding of this schema file let's launch the the graphql gateway and look at what happens when the data is generated from this file so from the terminal you're going to run away yarn run tina graphql server start and hit enter and now what will happen is is that we'll spin up a graphql server on this port 4001 where you can access the data now if you look in here we've got a configuration 
and here are our templates that we've created here. So this is template number one, and then this is template number two, and we have these YAML files. So if you look inside of here, this shows you the what the label is going to be called, the name, and the fields that we're using, such as text for the title, and for the name, we're going to be using an author, and it's going to be a select type, and it's going to come from this section authors, which you can now see here is two fields with text and type. And then in our settings, it gives you the sections and what we should be looking for in the types of content. Now in the schema, uh, GraphQL here, this is generated from obviously Tina, and it gives you all the different uh, types that will be available for us to query through GraphQL. And we also create this types file that has all the types for the generated content, such as orthodoc form that we'll be able to query, etc. So now I've gone over this files, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop a couple of content files in here, and then we can load up a GraphQL client and take a look at what's happening. So here we are in a GraphQL client and we can look at this docs here on the right hand side and we can actually look at the queries we can make. So from here we can get get documents, we can get post document, get your collections or a single collection, get a list of posts, the author documents or get a list of authors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a query that will take in our posts and return the data along with the author as well. So let's do that together. So we can create a query here and then we can do get post document and we can do relative path. And I created content and I called it post, I mean, first post dot MD. So I'm going to get this information for this particular markdown file. Then I'm going to return data because we want to return. We can do underscore underscore type name on article doc data. So this gives us the doc data from the article. And from that, we're going to want the title and we're also going to want the author. And the author, we're going to need the data from that. And the data is going to be on author doc data. And we're going to ask for the name and the avatar. And then we want to return the body. So we can just underscore body here. And now we should be able to run this query and inside the results, we should see from this localhost 4001 slash GraphQL, the return data that was in my documents. So here we have the returned data. So we have uh, the type name is an article doc data. The title is how to use the GraphQL. The author name is myself. And then we have the image that I'm using. And then in the body, we have when adding more things, including authors, you can see the work reflected. So that's how you can kind of play around with the data but it doesn't really show how it fits into the Tina ecosystem. So now that we've gone through how to define your schema, how to query the data using a GraphQL client, let's look at it in practice in our starter application. So here we are in the Tina Cloud starter. And what I have done is I have logged in using Tina Cloud and I'm on the vote for Pedro page, which essentially works the same way as the default fine schema that I showed in the example. Now, if you look at this raw JSON here, which is what is returned from the GraphQL, you can see that I'm pulling the article doc data and I have a title, an author, which returns both the name and the avatar. And then we have the body being returned as well. And these are all the things that we queried in there. And we can see them on this left-hand side bar. So you can see how really easy it is for a content creator 
who doesn't know what's happening behind the scenes, if they want to edit a page, they can come in, log in, and then start using what you've defined in the schema as what they can edit on the page. So this is the end of the video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to let us know in the comments on more things you want to learn about Tina Cloud. And until next time, see ya.